Well, he's been with me over the last months. You remember, I've been saying it all along. Kamala. Kamala the Chameleon Harris is on her way, and I was hoping it wasn't going to happen, but I said it. I put myself out there. Now it's uh, confirmed. Now what I said was, so that the whole story can get out there, because I know that um, I have a little suppression sometimes of my uh, of media, so you, you might share this one. The uh, What I said was that Kamala Harris is as empty as suit, almost like a Manchurian candidate, as Joe Biden. The difference is Joe Biden's senility is, what, is what's got him. And that's the reason why I don't think he's going to be lasting long. He's going to be turning this over to Kamala. Now, Kamala was already picked. Kamala was already a Camilla, uh, was already picked uh, a long time ago. I want you to remember that Pete Buttigieg have, was flying to Texas for a fundraiser. And in mid-flight, he turned around, which is very unusual. You usually complete at least the fundraising part. And he just uh, canceled his candidacy and gave his endorsement to Biden. He had gotten a call from David Axelrod. Axelrod, Soros, Eric Holder, Carville, with team leader Obama. Already vetted the situation. I think they told uh, Pete to step down and that he was going to have a very key sweet spot at the convention. I don't think they saw the problems with the convention because of COVID. But uh, I think he uh, it was their intention to put Kamala in and to take uh, Biden out, have him step aside or whatever. And then I think Pete might be getting an offer to shot at the VP. And, uh, and because the convention is coming up, it's going to be kind of hard for them. They can't have Biden trot out and do a debate with Donald Trump, and they can't avoid a debate. She's going to have to run, and she's going to run as the uh, presidential candidate. And what's so weird, what's so abusive about this, is that she didn't even make it in the primaries. She was not popular, but she's the insider in the beltway. This is deep state stuff. This doesn't really matter whether you're popular with the country. They'll get you elected. They got all the unions. They got all the, uh, the money. Uh, they got all the Black Lives Matter um, political clout now that most people don't realize is part of the Democratic Party to begin with. And uh, all of these things, the only, the only base that uh, Donald Trump has are the people that are sane. But how many sane people do you know? So Kamala is, um, is going to do what Obama wants her to do, which is to undo Trump's legacy. She has to, and she will, within the first, um, first you know, opportunity. It's going to undo every executive order, everything that can be undone. Right on down to some judge, judges that Trump put in that she's going to argue. She won't argue. She's, she's not intelligent. She's, she's ingeniously gifted with a chameleon-like ability to adapt and uh, to, uh, in, a, in a kind of a, a deceitful way, to charm people that are capable of just being sucked in by the political power of a personality. So where does this leave us? Well, my biggest uh, concern all along was this dream that I had. She was in an elevator. I was in an elevator with her. And, and I was in that elevator going up, and I knew there was a Jezebel spirit. Now, this was before she ran for, in the primaries for, for president. So I knew all along that she was going to be the one that the devil was going to try to use to take Trump out. And, uh, and it was so weird because, you know, I believe that it's possible for the Lord to give you an insight of what it is that you're to, you're to war against or pray against, which is why I've been quiet about the uh, Harris situation because I saw it already. I posted something uh, about uh, maybe two months ago. And I got to go back and find it on Facebook. You'll see it if you search. And it literally was a one page article during the, um, I kept from the primaries. And it says President Harris. And what's weird is it's because the Democrats with their um, Soros funded stuff were working on data processing down to uh, very specific data in the United States in order to mount a campaign. And Kamala, and, and what was weird was Wuhan, China was the data source. So Wuhan, China was working with these guys. And I, I'm not saying that there's anything connected with the, um, uh, the virus. I'm saying that it strikes me as a spiritual connection, that it would be China 
because that principality there wants to take America down. And something was allowed to be released that affected Trump. Had, had that not happened, Trump's economy would have made it impossible. Or you would have had the George Floyd incident because they were looking for an incident. As, um, as maddening and unjust, unjust an experience as that was, there was, um, there was a pursuit of looking for the incident, the flashpoint, because these things are predictable. And the, uh, the reality is that would have been what they could have done. But, you know, but the gift of the uh, shutting down the American economy allows them to gut, and they're doing their talking points now. They're blaming Trump for the economy. Of course, Democrats are killing the economy right now. But the average voter doesn't really look at that stuff. And so when I saw Kamala going up in that elevator, and I was in that elevator, this was a year ago. I told my friends about it. That was before anything. And I knew that the spirit of Jezebel was working there. That means that the media, which I've said all along, are the spirit of the false prophet. It's a world-ruling spirit. Now, this is crazy stuff, but I, you know, the heck, put it out there. That world-ruling spirit of the false prophet is working with the media. And right now, they're giving her this amazing schmooze treatment. It's like the reverse of Russiagate. It's the reverse of Gate. It's the reverse of Stormy Daniels. It's, it's a makeover to make her look moderate. She will, she's actually Obama's surrogate. She will undo everything that Trump did. And uh, my concern is that she's gonna have the media so like the prophets of Baal, false prophets, working with her, that um, the, the, the poor folks that I love, the good people in America that have watched the uh, deep state, uh, what they've done to, to Flynn, what they've done almost they did to Stone, to see what they almost did to the president. Uh, it just, it, it saddens me that the very thought of there not being any, uh, any justice at all, and that God really never intended that Donald Trump would not be there for this next term. The, the failure, I believe, and this is, this is gonna go down like a rat sandwich, is because the church, uh, I don't really believe rose up. I think there was enough voting out of anxiety to put Trump in and everybody went back to business as usual. I don't think we realized the apocalyptic cliffhanger that we're in. And I think just by going back to business as usual, <clears throat> God never wanted us to be business as usual. He wanted a different church and he wants a different America. So God's gonna get that different America and it's gonna come <clears throat> because folks like us are going to uh, not allow this, this uh, theft to happen. Remember Jezebel, <clears throat> excuse me, Jezebel stole Naboth's vineyards. Great story there where Ahab was mopey because Ahab is pacifist leadership, weak leadership, which is most of Washington deep state and a lot of Republicans. And so Jezebel's married to the king and he's moaning because he really wants his vineyard. So she like bumps off the guy and steal, takes it. What you have there is Jezebel will steal people's inheritances. And that's the nature of that spirit. It will rob inheritance by violating boundaries and borders. So you'll see all this crazy stuff that you're looking at now in the media and all the from um, white, um, white racist theory. I was watching Tucker tonight where they actually had they had HR, government paid HR three-day training with the nuclear, at, at, our, at our nuclear headquarters, uh, where all the executives have to go through reprogramming and a kind of cultic introspection about their sins <coughs> and then write letters of apology to, um, to who, people of color and women. And so, when, and this is government funded indoctrination. This is what happened to Jordan Peterson. This is what, what, what smoked him out of the university because the activists went in to the administration. They started doing the diversity, demanding that it be trained, uh, done in the classes and that language be changed. The firewall is, is going to have to show up and just a few courageous people can do it. But uh, if uh, Harris is president, all that stuff is going to go full tilt boogie and it's going to be, it's just, it's not, it would be like um, the world won't be in, in tribulation. America will go into a bed of tribulation. And it doesn't have to be. And this is the point. I believe the Lord showed me that thing in the elevator. And he showed me Kamala was going to be running for president. And he showed me that she's the trotted out, you know, horse that uh, Democrats are going to use. And I think Biden's going to step out and she's going to go in. 
And I believe that this was all, in a sense, to show me that's what the enemy has planned. That is not what I have planned. God wants us to be able to have. It will be a tumultuous um, second term for the president. If you think the left is crazy now, because they're armed, and they're, this isn't like, you know, spontaneous stuff in these cities, you know. This is, and the fact that the mayors are allowing it is, is, is criminal. It's actually well-funded paramilitary organizations that are tied in with Maoist, believe it or not, Maoist organizations that are totally communist linked into China. They really want anarchy in the United States. They want to start taking zones to the country and bringing them under, um, under, their, under con control of indigenous paramilitary forces that are working, masquerading under the Second Amendment as activists. But they're really not. They're actually laying siege to these cities. And it's a, it's a, it's a foretaste, in a way, of what the spirit of lawlessness looks like. Now, the good news. God shows us these things so that we can, um, if, he, if, he, if he can show it to you, then it's something that can be, can be preempted. If God gives you an advanced perception of something, it isn't always because it's a prophecy of what's going to happen. It's because the Lord is saying, this is what the enemy has planned. So I am believing, and I mean this sincerely, that our intensity over the next 80 some days is going to have to be especially uh, targeting the unpersuaded that are around us, Christians, because the power of our agreement is extreme, it, it multiplies strength. And many of you are already, you know what's going on, you're listening to me for years, you know, you know you're, you're not surprised by anything I'm saying. But what we have to do is there are pastors and preachers and leaders who are still, like, they fall into the category of where Paul said, you know, the Corinthians, some, are, some say they're of Paul and some say they're of Cephas, and then others say, I'm of Christ. The ones that say I'm of Christ are the, are the Christians that are saying, I'm not left wing or right wing. I'm not Democrat or Republican. I'm really for the king. I mean, I'll vote for Trump. But the answer isn't in politics. See, that's, that's the waffle factor. And they've got people that they're influencing. And it, it's, it's, a, um, it's a grief to not have a woke church, meaning awakened. So we have to have all, all hands to the pump because it's going to be difficult after the election, if Trump is elected again, uh, because the, uh, the madness is going to be just hyperventilated. But I think that the truth, we, we can see the hand of the sundial move back. We can pray to God for an extension of grace and mercy. And the reason is, I believe, and the Lord's given me a, this, I'm releasing this book called The Chaos Code, and it's how to make sense of the chaos in, the, in, this, in this day, I'm saying it's the last days because the last days began on the day of Pentecost. Peter got up and said, it shall come to pass in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit. So we're in the latter end of the last days. But in this period of time, nations are coming to their full formation. And I believe that God wants the United States to stay in the role that it's in globally because we need the years, the two or three years in front of us to be able to work. Look at the Middle East today. It was an incredible breakthrough. I was on a, a White House related call and uh, before the news came out because the fact that Saudi Arabia, and, and I told you that the Cyrus types are not just Donald Trump, Donald Trump and, and um, Mohammed bin Salman of Saudi Arabia. I said he's a Cyrus because not all Arabs um, that are the seed of Ishmael and the seed of Abraham are going to be hostile to Isaac. The Saudis what we're seeing is that Iran is bad news. That's like the goat nation. But Saudi Arabia can be a sheep nation, meaning it, it doesn't have to persecute the Christians and the Jews. It doesn't have to be part of that. And so Donald Trump has created an alliance with the Saudis. And Mohammed bin Salman is a Cyrus, literally a Cyrus in Saudi Arabia. Um, Victor uh, Orban in Hungary, the president of Poland, Boris Johnson in the UK, and God wants to see these sheep nations that are going to be coming into an alliance against what's going to be the China globalist. And the American globalists are in bed with China. They're the ones that are actually, a lot of them are funding the anarchy. Because they, they want to see Trump come down so they can line their pockets. And by the way, Wall Street and the big finance guys have already met with <coughs> Kamala. And so she's not going to hurt them. Small businesses, on the other hand, going to get crushed. 
and uh, because nobody cares about them, even if they're 70% of the economy. We are going to fight in the spirit, and we're going to mobilize in other ways in order to do what has to be done to keep the devil from his impatient, lusting, grasping, premature seizure of power. But I'm telling you, Kamala, Kamala is Hillary 2.0. It's the Jezebel spirit 2.0. And she has no real conscience. And she's chameleon-like. Um, Hillary wasn't likable. She was one-dimensional. Kamala has the chameleon quality. So she'll be whatever you need her to be. But she's bought and paid for already by the backers that put her in. With only 2% of the votes in the primaries. The only way she'd be picked is because she meets the criteria of what they believe can beat Trump and do their will. And she'll do it. So, if you've never been enlightened to spiritual warfare in the governmental arena, this is it. Father, I pray. I pray, I pray, I pray for the United States. <clears throat> I pray that this country, which was formed by you for your glory, will have mercy. I pray, Lord, for the sake of our children and the inheritance of our sons and daughters, that you will look upon the nation, not upon the sins, for we have sinned against you, but you will look upon the remnant and upon the seed that is in the country that desires to do the right thing. And I pray, Lord, that you will get grant an extension of mercy for your name's sake. For what will the world say, Father, when a man like Donald Trump, who has so fixed his name to Israel and to your people, and the Christian community, that uh, for him, Lord God, to, to be defeated in an hour when he is serving a purpose for the nation, I don't believe, Lord, I would give you glory. I do ask you, Lord, for mercy on America and grace upon Donald Trump, that you will enable him to finish the task that he's begun, to stand in the gap during the great crucible of America's crisis, and that you will strengthen the time for the sheep nations, that sheep nations can arise, that you will use the warning of America to the other nations. You will give us the platform to be able to go to these nations and warn them and show them how to move to the gates of legal, move to the gates of media, move to the gates of government, move to the gates of business, and to begin to do what we did not do, occupy the gates of our own culture, lest those gates be occupied by hell and turned against us. Father, we thank you for your long-suffering and patience. We thank you that you've awakened us, alerted us, warned us, cautioned us, and that even in the judgments that have come, they have been redemptive to awaken your people and your church. Now raise up Nehemiahs, raise up Ezra's, raise up Zerubbabel's, raise up the Joshua's, raise up the Haggai's and the Zechariah's, raise up the apostles and the prophets, raise up the statesmen evangelists, and I pray this body of Christ is listening right now, <clears throat> the remnant of believers, I pray for the awakening to come to them. Even as you send to the remnant building your temple in the Old Testament, send your awakening spirit to us that we will not be discouraged. We will see what is happening with clarity. But in the midst of it, we will have joy because we also see a great victory and we see a battle worth fighting in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray, Lord, I pray for all those, even who I'm, who I'm talking about, that uh, I could foresee, and, and Lord, and I say that I could see that even the devil will plant tares among the wheat, and he plants people in order to thwart a harvest. But I can also say and see that, Lord, you call us to bless and not curse. And so I pray for all of those people that are in this drama, this manipulated drama of politics, and I pray that there would be extraordinary grace, extraordinary surprises, extraordinary intervention. And as there are saints in Caesar's house, I pray that you will plant and you will make spiritually radioactive Christians around all of these people that are engaged in this political contest, that there can be a grace influence, a voice influence, and a, a, a voice from heaven that will cause the heart uh, to, to align with you. We pray for rulers and for those who are in authority that we may lead a godly and peaceful life. We pray for you to just manipulate the circumstances surrounding 
our battle right now over the next 80 days and fight, Lord God. Fight in the heavens and help, uh, help us, Lord, to work and do what we're called to do, that you can bless this country with mercy once more in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, there you got my thoughts on what's coming down. And uh, I think we're going to see things unraveling pretty quickly because, uh, oh, you guys want to see something? This is just, I just got to show you this. Watch this. This. Watch this. See this? Look at this. Wearing a mask will give the life of a clerk in your local store or your letter carrier. Are you seeing this? Your child's teacher. I cannot believe that the news didn't even just cover the obvious. He can only say what he has written down for him to say. Then he looks up and then he goes down to read what it says. This is all the time because he's scripted. That's what's scary. He will say what he's told to say. The difference between him and potential presidential candidate Harris is she'll smile and do it with uh, finesse and you won't realize it's the script that was given to her. But in Jesus' name, we've got the script. All right, talk to you later. Share this, will you? Share it because uh, we need our people to know what's coming. Amen. Hey, if you like this video today, you could help me out by leaving some comments and you know, you could vote up this video. Just give me a like sign and uh, click on like so that I know if this is working for you. And also share it with your friends because our entire movement is based upon people sharing ideas with other people. And if you want to be regularly notified about these broadcasts, then you want to subscribe so that you'll be able to get the latest material as soon as it comes out.